What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, if you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get in to another very interesting mafia topic. And on this channel, I've taken the duty of covering many father and son duos. We've talked about them. Sonny Red and Bruno and Delicato, Gerard and John Papa, John Gotti Jr. and John Gotti Sr. We've talked about a lot of them here on the channel. Today, we're going to talk about another very interesting father and son duo. The father, a man that would become a legend of sorts, according to many in the area of Ozone Park, Queens, and his son, a kid who would follow his father into the life by his early 20s and ultimately become a made member by 25, eventually taking over his father's crew. In the end, though, both were plagued by law enforcement and would ultimately both end up in prison, one of which for life. The story of Ronnie One-Arm Truccio and his son, Alphonse. Next, on Sit Down Shorts, Ronald Truccio was born in 1951 in Brooklyn, New York. But as a child, his family would move to the Queens Enclave of Ozone Park, where he would be raised and spend all of his life. Now, as a kid, Ronald Truccio would actually be hit by a car and suffer a severe arm fracture as a child. His arm would be partially paralyzed and he would be unable to use it for most of his life. He would from what I understand, very much have an uh, issue with his humerus bone uh, and his lower forearm. Now, weirdly enough, as a child, I actually broke my humerus bone as well, and it was uh, very painful and was very difficult. I still can feel in my left arm where I hurt myself when I was just nine years old. So I obviously understand where Truccio was coming from. Now, for Truccio, he would have an even more mangled forearm and would end up not being able to use it the rest of his life. Hence, his nickname, Ronnie One-Arm. Now, for Ronald Truccio, he would become involved in his late teens and early 20s, associating with a group of individuals that created a gang out of southern Woodhaven and northern Ozone Park called the 7-9 Gang. They would uh, be very involved with the typical mob farm team activities, including uh, selling drugs, robberies, chop shops, and bookmaking. Now, for Ronnie One-Arm, a bookmaking would be something he would do for long parts of his life, which we'll get into. Now, um, one of the things that also they were very involved with was stealing cars. And this was something that uh, Roddy one arm would also uh, not only do, but also oversee. Uh, what they would do is basically steal high-end cars and then take them to chop shops where they would strip them and or sell the cars uh, for high-end amounts of profit. As we know, Roy DeMeo was very involved and that sort of operations for the Gambino crime family as well uh, years before uh, in the 70s. Now, in 1977, Ronald Truccio would actually give birth to his son, a man, a uh, kid called Alphonse. And at that point, he was still an associate of the Gambino crime family, really running around in many different mob circles, including uh, ones with Jojo Carrazzo in them, the Gaudis in them. Uh, Ronnie Truccio was very connected to many people in Ozone Park, Queens. And that's the thing about Ozone Park, um, many of which all know each other and they were all involved in very similar things as they grew up. Now, for Ronnie Truccio, he would become a close associate of Joseph Jojo Carrazzo, who was just a bit older than him, but was very much plugged in uh, to the runnings and goings on of the Gambino crime family. Ronald Truccio would become a made member of the Gambino crime family in the late 80s. And he would be uh, put into the crew of Peter Gotti, who would take over the crew from his brother, John, the Bird and Hunt and Fish Club crew. Peter was at one point a sanitation worker in New York City, but would ultimately take over the haunts operations once John became boss in 1985. Uh, Peter Gotti had a pretty solid crew out of the Bird and Hunt and Fish Club, which would include... Ronald Truccio, and Skinny Dom Pazonia. Now, uh, for Ronnie Truccio, he would continue 
his chop shop uh, stuff, as well as robberies, as well as bookmaking. But he would also eventually uh, get into the world uh, of enforcing as well. Ronald Truccio uh, would start hanging around Don Pizzoni, and they were involved in multiple, uh, allegedly multiple hits. The one that uh, comes to mind. Now, I want to make this clear. Ronald Truccio was never... Uh, involved as far as the government in this hit. But uh, it is alleged that Truccio participated in the hit uh, on the Rob the Mob duo, Rosemary and Thomas Uva. As we discussed in a video that can be seen up here, uh, the Uvas were robbing mob social clubs, one of which uh, they robbed uh, Skinny Dom twice. Skinny Dom wanted them dead. And allegedly uh, in late 1992, the crew were stalked uh, to the area of 103rd Avenue and 91st Street in Ozone Park and a Mercury Topaz, and the car was lit up with bullets, and they both died at the scene. The alleged conspirator of that crime, who was ultimately indicted for it, was Skinny Dabazoni. Now, he would ultimately beat the rap, but it was alleged that night, uh, but without enough evidence, that uh, Ronald Truccio was the other shooter in that case. Now, again, I want it to be made clear uh, Ronald Truccio never faced charges for that alleged crime. Now, as I said, Ronald Truccio became very involved uh, with sports betting, and that's something that he would do uh, most of his career. By the mid-90s, he was making tons of money from his bookmaking operations, and it was alleged at one point that he was taking fifteen dollars to $30,000 per game from certain betters, and he was making in upwards in some years – $600,000 a week. At one point, he was making an upwards of $30 million a year just in his bookmaking operations. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't just bookmaking that he and his new crew uh, were involved with. Keep in mind, by the mid-90s, a skinny Don Pizzoni was starting to get into some legal issues, uh, really towards the end of the late 90s. Uh, skinny Dom, who had been made uh, acting uh capo of the old Peter Gotti crew, Pizzonia faced his own legal issues uh, and was actually uh, sent to prison. At that point, uh, Ronald Truccio would take over the crew by the late 90s, and he would create a very lucrative and dangerous crew known in Ozone Park as the Ozone Park Boys. Now, for uh, Truccio, this crew was doing all sorts of damage. Uh, not only were they doing plenty of work in New York, including at one point in 1995, it's alleged that members of the Truccio crew uh, participated in tying up five women in an armored car robbery at a bank on Jamaica Avenue in Queens. The crew allegedly made off with more than $2 million in cash and 400000 in checks, according to certain sources in law enforcement. They were also not only doing crimes in New York, including bookmaking, which was run by an individual called Michael Rockefort. He ran a wire room uh, that was taking bets inside Ozone Park. They had two different wire rooms. But also the crew was conducting activities in Florida as well. Uh, Ronnie Truccio allegedly sent them down there to start committing crimes, uh, and they were making tons of money down there as well. The Liberty Posse, as they were ultimately as well known as, uh, included people such as uh, Truccio's young son, Alphonse, who at this point was really only in his 20s, late teens, early 20s, as well as Todd LaBarca, Frank and Michael Rockefort, and this individual, Gennaro Bruno. Now, Gennaro Bruno uh, was supposedly very involved with drug uh, dealing. He was involved with marijuana, cocaine, all sorts of other things. He actually, at one point, Gennaro Bruno was uh, someone that would plead guilty in federal court to killing another individual associated with this crew called Martin Bosshart. Uh, Bosshart was killed in 2002, and ultimately for a member of the crew, Gennaro Bruno, he would plead guilty to this crime and get 21 years in federal prison, uh, a place he still sits today. These were violent individuals. They had no problem killing people, and all the money that they made flowed up to Alphonse Truccio. Truccio's crew wasn't pretty. They were not these 
um, you know, racketeers, if you will, but they made a lot of money through bookmaking, chop shops, bank robberies, armored car hits, credit card fraud, all sorts of different things. But what they also were able to do was they were feared. They were a young type of farm team that reported up top. And you know who was making a lot of money? Ronald Truccio. Also for Truccio, he was making a lot of money out of a restaurant that he created called Aldo's in Ozone Park. Things were good for Ronald Truccio. He was a very respected individual. He was a capo regime of the old Bergen crew. And he had a lot of young whippersnapper gangsters that wanted to make money for him. And that all flowed up, as we know, in these different crime families. Now, Truccio would ultimately uh, do some things as well himself in Tampa. He allegedly at one point uh, was very involved uh, with trying to muscle into not only the valet parking business, but nightclubs as well. He actually was said to be in certain operations with a Gambino associate and mob informant, John A. Light, uh, and they can be seen together in an old picture seen here. Now, uh, at one point for uh, Ronald Truccio, he started concerning himself, though, with some of the exploits that were coming out of Florida. A lot of things were happening. A lot of bad crimes were happening. And at one point, Truccio became concerned uh, that he'd actually bring in another individual from the crew, uh, a person uh, called Michael uh, Siccio. And Siccio uh, uh, would uh, be sent down to Florida uh, to basically oversee the operations down there. At one point, Truccio instructed Siaccio to oversee them and that they were kind of out of hand. But uh, the crew was also discussing killing witnesses and certain people that were involved in the crimes uh, that they were uh, involved with. So things were getting kind of out of control for Truccio, but he was making a lot of money. He wasn't totally worried because in the end, there really wasn't much to connect him to all this. But again, people in his crew, he trusted and thought that all the money would flow up top. Ronald Truccio, though, uh, would start, though, to face some real legal problems of his own. In the early 2000s, he and his son, uh, Alphonse uh, Truccio, were actually indicted in state court uh, for overseeing an illegal gambling operation. The Queens District Attorney at the time, Richard Brown, would announce a 36-count racketeering indictment charging Alphonse and Ronald Truccio with running a 15-men bookmaking team um, and charging them with enterprise corruption, uh, promoting gambling and other gambling crimes. Now, the Queens District Attorney would allege that at one point uh, in certain years, the group was bringing in $30 million a year in sports betting over about three years. And at one point, as I said, officials said wagers were as large as fifteen dollars to $25,000 Per game. Now, Ronald Truccio's lawyer, Joseph Carrazzo Jr., would say that his client had not been involved in bookmaking operations and scoffed at the attorney's contention that Truccio was a crime family captain. Um, so, in the end, this would ultimately uh, put both he and his son in prison, but it was a fairly small charge and they only got one to three years in state prison. The problem, though, for Ronald Truccio was this would be the last time he would see any freedom. In 2003, Ronnie Truccio, along with members of the Ozone Park Boys, were indicted in Florida federal court on a slew of crimes, including racketeering, uh, over 50 bank robberies, commercial robberies, home invasions, as well as certain people in this indictment were charged with multiple murders. This was bad for Ronald Truccio. He knew that it was likely certain members of this group uh, we're going to cooperate against him, and he was going to have a lot of trouble. Uh, and that would indeed happen because people like Michael Ciaccio would actually testify against him and basically say that uh, he was the overseer of all these people. He took the money. It all flowed up top, and that's how racketeering and Rico work. For Ronald Truccio, Rico was likely going to be the end. He was also hit with other things, including credit card fraud, uh, insurance fraud, they also would allege in state court that he built the state of New York for about uh, three years of uh, disability benefits and things of that nature. Uh, Ronald Truccio was basically screwed. Uh, and in uh, 2005, he would eventually get 20 years 
in federal prison for all of these racketeering crimes. Um, the feds, though, didn't want to just stop at 20 years. They wanted Ronald Trucchio to never see the light of day again. And that's exactly what happened. Ronald Trucchio in 2006 was indicted again on new racketeering charges out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, as we know, again, multiple members would flip, including uh, John A. Light. Uh, and Ronald Trucchio, uh, even though he didn't face any murder cases, would ultimately in uh, 2007 get a life sentence uh, for all his racketeering crimes. The feds would basically allege and discuss that his charges were good enough uh, for a life sentence. It was similar to the cases against certain members of the commission back in the 80s. Some of those members had not any murders in their indictments, but again, it was all flowing up. All these crimes were being committed and ordered by one individual. And in this RICO conspiracy, they can flow it all uphill. Ronald Trucchio was given a life sentence. He is still alive and 71 years old. He is serving his sentence at FCI Schuylkill in Pennsylvania. Now, for his son, Alphonse Trucchio, in 2005, when his father would go away uh, for a long period of time, he would actually take over the old crew that his father ran. And yes, this was the remnants of the old Bergen crew. Alphonse Trucchio was a prodigy, if you will. He was really only in his late 20s, early 30s by this point, And he was looked at as a very powerful individual. He would take over what was left of the Ozone Park Boys. They were making a lot of money through uh, all sorts of different crimes, including drug trafficking, bookmaking, extortion, loan sharking, everything and anything that the mafia does. Queens was still very much controlled certain parts by Alphonse Trucchio. The problem, though, for Trucchio was in 2011, hundreds of members of multiple families in the five families were all indicted in what the feds would call Mafia Takedown Day in early 2011. One of the individuals involved that day was Alphonse Trucchio. Now, Trucchio uh, would ultimately uh, face uh, the federal government, and he was sentenced in 2012 to 121 months in federal prison. Uh, for not only racketeering, but drug traffic, trafficking and multiple other crimes. Several other members were involved in Takedown Day as well, including uh, Bobby Glasses Vernace and other members of the Gambino crime family. Now, at one point, uh, we would learn some very interesting things about Alphonse Trucchio. Uh, he would ultimately be knocked down to soldier, allegedly, uh, after his arrest and ultimate incarceration after he got into a bizarre argument in court, an outside court, with his lawyer, uh, Jojo Carrazzo Jr., uh, who is the son of alleged Gambino consigliere, Joseph Carrazzo, uh, they would get into some sort of heated argument about defense strategy. And Jojo Carrazzo Jr. ultimately believed that he was disrespected. And Carrazzo Sr. was furious. And he would ultimately knock uh, Mr. Trucchio down to soldier. His old crew, which was the old remnants of the Bergen crew, was allegedly given to uh, old uh, errand boy, uh, Thomas Monk Sassano. Sassano had been involved with the Gambino family as an associate and then a soldier for a long period of time. He would take the crew over once Alphonse Trucchio uh, was knocked down. Now, Trucchio would also face possible shelving after it was alleged that in prison up at Raybrook, he got into a uh, physical altercation with Bobby Glasses Vernace. Now, we don't absolutely know what happened here. His lawyer, Trucchio, is a lawyer, would allege that he never got into any sort of argument. But it was talked about that he would actually get into a heated altercation with Bobby Glasses, where he would allegedly slap Bobby Glasses uh, or vice versa, someone slapped Trucchio. Uh, no one actually knows what indeed happened. I will say, if you guys have any more information on this, you're welcome to share it in the comment section. Uh, I try to do heavy research in everything I do, but there wasn't a ton to be found about this, but it has been heard in certain circles that uh, Trucchio was actually shelved after he got into that argument with Bobby Glasses, who obviously held a higher position than Trucchio did. Now, for Alphonse Trucchio, he would be released um, from a halfway house in 2020 and ultimately uh, completely released uh, in February of 2020. His current status in the Gambino crime family is unknown. Uh, I have no idea what Trucchio does now. 
both are still alive, as we know. Ronnie Trucchio is serving life and will never see the light of day again. Uh, and Trucchio, I'd have to imagine, is doing something uh, at this point, but we really don't know. I mean, he is in his, uh, I believe, 50s at this point. Uh, we've seen several uh, members get out of prison, and it's really unknown what they do now. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with Alphonse. Trucchio, remember, the younger, was a prodigy. He was a very respected individual. But some of the things he did after the fact um, were called upon into question. And we can say one thing about Alphonse Trucchio. He was very respected. He did his time um, and really didn't back down to people that, in my opinion, probably kind of disrespected him. Who the hell is Jojo Carrazzo Jr. to say anything to a made man in Alphonse Trucchio. In the end, though, as we know, if your father is a consigliere in the game being a crime family, he can do what he wants to protect you. So Trucchio, in my estimation, probably should be allowed back in. I don't really know why he is shelved. But again, um, he never really backed down. And that fight with Bobby Glass has maybe did him in for good. We'll see. We'll have to check that out in the future. As always, if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another sit-down video.